let's enhance our understanding of conditional structures and relational operators by looking at a vending machine example. Here's the problem statement. Simulate a machine that sells granola bars. Each granola bar costs $1.25, if the user deposits exactly $1.25, the machine should vend the bar. If the user deposits more than $1.25, the machine should make change. And if the user deposits less than $1.25, the machine should request more money. To get started, we would open Eclipse, create a project, create a class, and create a main program. I also like to copy in the problem statement as a comment. Now I've done these things in advance to move along our study this morning. Let's choose some data. Well, certainly we want to see what happens with $1.25. So that's going to be final, double, cost of bar equals 125. Now for our money, we're going to have double money deposited. Let's add those to the main program. Here's the main program in Eclipse. Final double cost of bar equals 125. Now the reason I put final in front of it is that this is a constant. That is a value that's not going to change while the program's being run. And we'll have double money. So we've now declared two variables. Notice that Eclipse is putting up little yellow flags. You don't have to pay attention to the yellow flags in Eclipse. In this case, what it's warning you about is the fact that we haven't used these variables in the program. In general, you don't want to leave unused variables lying around, and sometimes when there's an unused variable, it means that you forgot to finish the computation, so that's why Eclipse flags it. Now the next thing we need to do is to get our input. We've done that before, so we know how to do it. We'll use a scanner object. So we will import java.util.scanner, and we'll construct the scanner in the main program. So scanner keyboard equals new scanner system.in. And then we'll prompt the user. of course, telling them how much a bar costs. Now, you'll notice that there's a problem with what I've just done there. Because the cost of a bar is a constant, by putting it in in the text, if we change the constant, our prompt won't match. So let's do that better. So we'll enter dollar sign in double quotes because that's a string. Then we'll concatenate on the cost of the bar and then for a bar. Notice now when we change our constant, our prompt to the user will change automatically. Now this is a great time to run the program or we could put in one more line. So we'll say money equals keyboard dot next double. And now we really do need to run to the program to make sure everything's working. Enter $1.25 for a bar. And it stopped there. So it did the right thing. Now another thing you see is that that prompt may not be the nicest prompt around. So let's fix it a little bit. Each bar costs $1.25. Please enter your money. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. One point two five. Okay, so our program is running just fine now. The next thing we need to do is to identify our control structure. 
you'll notice that the problem statement contains the word if. That's a hint. That means that it's likely there's going to be a conditional statement involved. That's something to look for in problem statements to help you figure out which control structure is useful in your code. So let's write the code, including the output. Here we are in Eclipse again. We've just entered the money from the user. I added a comment there. So calculate whether user needs change or to enter more money. This is again setting up what's going to be in the next segment of code. The computer doesn't execute comments. They're just for keeping the code organized. So if money is less than cost of bar. Well, in that case, they haven't put in enough money. So we'll do system out print line. Please insert. And we'll have cost of bar minus money. OK, now you'll see that Eclipse is unhappy at this point. The reason it's unhappy is because of precedence. So the plus here on the left is going to be done before the minus on the right. Well, when the plus is done here, you're adding a string to a double. Well, it turns out that actually turns into string concatenation. The problem is that string concatenation doesn't work with a minus sign. And by the way, it's not what we want anyways. So what we need to do is to take better control of the precedence here. We wanted that minus sign to be done first. So the way we tell Java to do things first is by inserting some parentheses. And notice now, Eclipse is happy. Now, if money equals cost of bar, and remember, equals is not a single equal sign. That's an assignment statement. It's two equal signs together. This is when we want to vend. So we'll tell them to enjoy their candy. And last, we'll say system out print line. Your change is. And we're going to have money minus cost of bar. Now you'll notice Eclipse is unhappy again, and it's actually the same problem we encountered earlier. So it'll have the same fix we encountered earlier. That's to insert some parentheses. Now you'll notice here that I didn't say else if money is greater than cost of bar. I actually don't have to, because if money isn't less than cost of bar, and isn't equal to the cost of bar, then it's greater than. So let's run the program and see if it works. So first let's try 125. That looks good. It says enjoy your candy. Then we'll run it again, this time with 150. Your change is 25 cents. That looks good. And let's give it a dollar. Please insert 25 cents. Now, it would be very tempting to stop the program at this point and think that everything's just perfect. But let's take a look at what happens with $1.30. Ooh, that's ugly. And unfortunately, it's ugly in a way we don't know how to fix just yet. It is actually the correct answer. The 0 .05 is right there. What's happened down here is that 130 can't evenly be represented as a binary number. Now that's not something I expect you to know, and this isn't a problem you could have anticipated. So we've got a little issue here that we're going to have to work at. So we've tested our program successfully. Remember, all three of these tests work just beautifully. But let's take a look at what happens now if we change the cost of the candy 
to $1.30. We suspect this may be some problems. First off, because otherwise, why would I bring it up? But also because 130 didn't work out so nicely in our previous example. First off, notice that it doesn't look pretty. So each bar cost 1.3. Again, we don't know how to fix that just yet, but we will. Okay, so it recognized that. Let's try 140. We should be getting 10 cents back. Notice our change is 0 0.0999999999 something. Well, that is 10 cents. It just needs to be rounded a little bit. Kind of ugly for now. And let's see what happens with $1.20. Okay, 10 cents, 0 0.0009. So notice sometimes things are a little bigger and sometimes things are a little smaller. Also, if we continue doing this, eventually that equality comparison would fail. Unfortunately, that's a hard thing to plan in advance, but in general, when you're doing a comparison of doubles, because of these little rounding problems that we're seeing showing up in the output, you should never use equality. That means we need to reconsider the design of our program a little bit. What happened originally was that we accidentally picked test values that were easy to represent perfectly in binary. That's unfortunate because it led us to a solution that wasn't a good solution. And we've got these equality comparisons between floating point that are very dangerous because Java is only storing a fixed number of digits. So to fix this problem, what we're gonna do is put our money in pennies. Now this is gonna require us to do a little bit of work. Instead of our cost of bar being a double, it should be an integer, and it should be 130. Our money now will become an integer too. The problem is when we're talking to the user, we still need to communicate in dollars because asking users to put things in pennies is just weird. They're not gonna like it. So each bar costs, and then we have the cost of bar and ask them to enter their money. So we've got the double here, and what we're gonna do is multiply it by 100. Now I'm gonna put 100.0 there to recognize that this is double multiplication that's going on. Now you might think that this would be the best way to proceed at this point, that is to truncate to an integer. But remember, sometimes our numbers were a little bit under and sometimes our numbers were a little bit over. And so that really isn't a good way to do it. What we wanna do here is really to round. So to do that, you add 0 0.5 as a double, and then you truncate. So that way, if it was a little bit under, it gets pushed over to the next integer, and when you truncate, it works. If it was a little over, it gets pushed up, but not so much that it hits the next integer, and that works too. Let's think through our logic again. If money is less than the cost of bar, that should work the same. The only difference here is we need to divide by 100, or we need to do something to change our pennies back into dollars. So let's divide by 100. So we've got two integers, and when we're dividing by 100, remember that that is integer division. So we need to really think carefully about that. I have a feeling that's not going to work very well. If it's equal, enjoy your candy is still going to be right. And here in the other case, we're also going to want to divide by 100. Well, let's run the program and actually see what the problem is. Also, that code is looking a little crowded, so I'm going to move the else statement down. These cascading else statements are allowed to be indented this way, even though it doesn't perfectly represent the structure of the program, because otherwise the code tends to slide off the right side of the screen and get hard to read. I've sort of hinted that we have a problem with this program. Let me run it for you so you can see what the problem is. This is a common problem to show up in programming. Okay, for, for one thing, we forgot to handle the 130 when we were printing it out in the prompt. 
So 130 said, enjoy your candy. So that looks good. So we can see we've got one problem to fix. We're going to have to go cost of bar divided by 100. Now we've done the same division by 100 several times. Let's see if it's going to work. Whoops. Each bar costs $1. Uh-oh, we've got a problem. We don't even need to finish running this program. To stop a program that's running, you hit this little red terminate button. Let's think for a minute about what went wrong. The cost of the bar was 130, which is an integer, and when we divide by 100, we get 1. Remember that when you divide two integers, you get an integer and that it truncates. So we don't get 1.3, we get 1. What we really wanted to divide by was 100.0. Now, like I say, we made that mistake in three places, so we have to remember to fix it in three places. So let's see what that looks like now. Each bar costs $1.3, so that's not pretty, but we don't know how to fix that one yet. Please enter our money. It says enjoy your candy, so that looks good. Let's run it again. Here's 140 being put in. Your change is 10 cents, that's correct. And how about 120? Please insert 10 cents. So it looks like our program is working right now. So putting our money in pennies was the key to making this program work correctly. Happy programming.